so impressed that y'all stuck it to the end of the day. So round of applause because I do realize I do a lot of work camps every year, um, and I do realize that it is kind of exhausting by the end of the day. And if you're not tired, I want to know what your secret is because I'm exhausted. But seriously, thank you for being here. This has been just amazing, and having you all here today has just warmed my heart. And especially some of you, you know, the local people, I love always getting to see the local people. Some of you have traveled really far to be here today, and for that I really 100% truly appreciate you. I think it's pretty awesome. Marco, I'll hug you again later. <laughs> Costa Rica, guys. He came from Costa Rica. Wow. Um, so this, this is a panel discussion. This discussion today is about contributing to open source. And all the people that you see here on the stage are part of the open source community, as you are as well. Um, and some of you contribute probably as much or more than some of us here, but the truth is that we all contribute in a great way to everything that goes into creating an open source community, the open source project, which we think of as WordPress the software, but I think of as open source community, WordPress the community. And so we all think about the different aspects that go into creating Everything that is WordPress, because WordPress is more than software. It's the people that make it. Poetry is co code. is poetry. I always say it backwards. Code is poetry. There's so much that goes into creating this. This isn't Microsoft, where we all buy something every year and we can complain or not. If you don't like something about what's going on, you have a voice to be able to help make change. Every year, there's, there's uh, releases. There's top-level releases. There's minor releases, there's all kinds of different release squads. And to be on a release squad, you don't have to even code. I'm on a release squad right now, and I'm doing marketing, because I'm not a developer. I do have a plug in the repository, I'll tell you about later, but... Just kidding. I might have that that about this <laughs> um, but seriously, it's, there's so many ways that you can contribute to the open source project. And so what I wanted to do was gather some people that I know near and dear, and I know how, how much they contribute. I don't even know all their stories and how we got started here, but I wanted to let you hear about some of the opportunities and some of the stories about open source and the contributors that are here today. I don't know. But what I want to start with is I just want to go down the line here, have everybody introduce themselves to you, what they do with WordPress, maybe where they work, where they're from in the world, and then, um, and then as they pass the mic back, I want to hear how they got started with WordPress and what their first contributions to open source community was. So. Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm louder. <laughs> um, I'm Maisha Green. I'm a full stack WordPress developer. So at my full time, I uh, code. Um, I'm also one of the mark make marketing team co reps, so I contribute to marketing. And I also organize a WordPress meetup monthly for Columbia, South Carolina, so I am a meetup organizer as well. Hi, my name is Jonathan DeRogers. Um, I work at Blue Ghost. I'm part of their, their commitment to the Fight for the Future program. Uh, so I'm sponsored full time to contribute back to WordPress Core. Um, I was on recently the 5.8 and 6.1 release squads as a coordinator, um, and I'm frequently involved with minor and security releases. Uh, I'm from New Bedford, Massachusetts, and I am the lead organizer for the WordPress Boston meetup currently. Pass that one this way. You said you reused that one. Okay, fair. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she got the hot mic. <laughs> gave it to the one person who has the one of the loudest voice as well then. Um, I'm going to do my best. Uh, so my name is Shanta. I'm uh, the project liaison manager at Codable, uh, which is a platform that hires WordPress freelancers. Um, I've been in WordPress since uh, 2010, I think. The first contribution I made um, was 2012 at the first WordCamp I ever attended, which was Toronto, and I gave my very first talk. Since then, I've given over 40 WordCamp talks. I've lost count now. Um, and I am the lead organizer for the WordPress Hamilton meetup, where I am from. And, uh, are we allowed to say anything about Canada? Maybe? Where we are, we are <laughs> talking about WordCamp Canada. It's not official. 
Okay, Kevin, I promise I didn't say anything otherwise. Uh, we, are, we are looking at doing WordCamp Canada, and I'm on the legal organizing team there. Hello. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I'm trying to hold this way out here because, you know, my voice is not quite like hers, but I, anyway. I'm Kira. Um, I am a software uh, developer. I have, um, I have a piece of software called Dragon Teach um, that helps students, helps te instructors teach their students WordPress. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I've been doing WordPress stuff since uh, probably 2008 or 2009, maybe, where somebody came to me. It was, it was, we were hosting their site, and they were like, "We want to do something." And I was like, "What's this WordPress thing?" Um, but yes, I uh, I largely um, freelance or contract uh, uh, my my work to uh, to doing WordPress um, builds and stuff. Hello. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Marcus Burnett and I am from the Orlando, Florida area. Um, I am on the community and events team at GoDaddy, uh, the domain hosting company. Um, and so I get to travel to WordCamps and talk to people and um, share a bit about what we're doing in the WordPress space. Um, I also started a site called the WP World, uh, which is um, was built to help connect the community to each other and to work camps and businesses to work pressers and all of that. So um, building that. Um, I'm also one of the co-reps on the WordPress photo directory team. And so uh, if you haven't checked that out, it's a great library of free photos to use for your projects. Um, and so I'm one of the co-reps there and moderators and help facilitate um, folks being able to share their photos there. And I've been working with WordPress for, I don't know, since 2015 or 16, something like that, but not really part of the community until really the onset of COVID, like the worst time to be part of the community, but it was all online and we got to connect with each other and uh, it's been really great to start to see people in person again. Or it was the best time. Or maybe it was the best time. It's the best of time. Any time is, 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 is a great time. If you haven't met me, I'm Michelle Prashad. I am the, one of the lead organizers of the local meetup. So if you are in Rochester, we do have a meetup every month, usually the first Monday of every month, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. For the last few years, we've been online. We're still online right now, which means that we're getting people attending from all over the world, which is really cool, and learning through the local Rochester meetup, which I absolutely love. Um, I am the Director of Community Engagement for Stellar WP and Liquid Web. We have a whole bunch of plugins um, that I help uh, on the marketing team and help by going out and talking about. Um, as far as the open source project, I work with Marcus on the photos directory. So if you go to wordpress.org slash photos, you'll see how you can contribute photos to the directory. I'm one of the moderators, so I get to say yes or no whether your photo comes into the directory. We put most of them in. But it's, it's a fun project. And then I also contribute to marketing as well and community as well. So I do a lot of mentoring of work camps and organizing work camps and speaking at work camps. I think this is my 75th work camp and probably my 50th time speaking, which is pretty cool. So um, absolutely love it. It's one of those things that I absolutely love. It's, it's, if you haven't done it and you want to, I suggest you apply to speak at a work camp because it is literally what opened doors. I'm happy you're here today. My first WordCamp ever was WordCamp Buffalo in 2015, and it was, I couldn't believe that I was sitting there learning from like some major people in the WordPress community for 20 bucks, because in 2015 it was 20 bucks for a whole day, and they gave me lunch, and there was a party afterwards, and I was like, come on, blow anyway. And swag. And swag. Like, it was pretty amazing. We have to declare, I don't know how much going across the board. That's right. <laughs> So what I want to do is pass the mic again, but I want to I want to ask you, how did you get started? What was something that made you want to do more than just build websites for yourself, but also be part of the community? Well, I need to go first. <laughs> so uh, I came to fame in WordPress as being the editorial director of the Master WP Takeover. So that's how a lot of people met me, and uh, we came in pretty spicy. If for those of you who were subscribed to Master WP. And uh, 
I've always been a person that believed if I'm going to talk and like complain about something, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm going to have to do something about it as well. So if I had a concern about contributing or you know, back to the future, not saying I do for those listening, um, I would be mortified if somebody could come to me and say, well, what are you doing about it? And I'm like, oh, I'm complaining. So I decided I really wanted to be a part of the community and also some wonderful people like Michelle, say Reed, Courtney Robertson, they uh, pretty much showed me I was going to be a part of the community. I'm just, I'm just kidding, I, I love them, but um, I had wonderful people who were like, if you want to help, we'll be more than happy to hold your hand and help you help. Trying to pinpoint uh, the exact kind of pivot point, but um, I remember I spoke at Work Camp Providence in Rhode Island in 2012, um, and before that I was mainly just you know, building websites and stuff for clients uh, at a small agency. And uh, at that Work Camp there was a contributor day, and so I really had the curtain lifted as far as how the sausage is made, and you know this this community of people, well, this, they're everywhere, and they all just kind of fix bugs, and like, it was kind of cool. Um, and I'm always down for you know, new challenges or figuring out what an issue is and trying to fix it, um, which I guess makes a developer in most cases. So uh, I, I learned at uh, that WordCamp about, about contributing, and um, I actually just passed my 10-year uh, anniversary of my first props, to my, my credited, first credited contribution to the WordPress project. Um, so yeah, that was, that was kind of that. I'm pretty sure I started there. I'll go since I already have one. Um, yeah, so I worked as a designer first, somewhat of a developer for an agency in Orlando for over a decade. And um, then I left there and I went and I kind of switched gears in what I was doing. Um, when I left there, what I had done for 10 years was work with agencies or with our agency as a designer and developer, what I really wanted to do from that point was see how I could help other agencies do the stuff that I was doing. And so I started working as a, um, as a, a, a support rep for a company called Sky Birch, um, which was acquired by GoDaddy. And I really got that like itch to help other agencies, other freelancers, other developers and designers do the things that they were trying to do um, through that support role, I got to find out a lot of the different things that they were struggling with and, you know, pile it on top of the things that I already know that, design, that agencies struggle with because of working in an agency for 10 years. And so, um, I really got the itch there in that support role um, to really help um, be part of the community, to help other agencies, to help other people in the WordPress space um, just kind of face some of the challenges that they face day to day. Uh, and then, after being acquired by GoDaddy, I kind of moved out of support and more directly into this community and events position. And it's allowed me to be able to contribute to the photo directory, be able to help other folks like Courtney Robertson that was mentioned is on my team as well, be able to help support her and the things that she does to contribute back to the community as well. Um, so I feel really lucky and blessed to be able to, to do that and to be able to help the people that were me when I was working at that agency for all right. Um, so my first uh, interaction with open source was probably like uh, in high school. I had a friend of mine who was like, "Look at this free BSD thing that uh, that I can load on my computer," and, uh, and it was just like it was like this is this is all free. You need a whole operating system, and uh, and it's like you just call smack. There's like people just just give this 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 product out there and just make the world better that way. And it was, that was really, really like, you look at it as a, as like, I, I want to do that. I, I love developing stuff. I love building stuff. And if, if, you know, I would totally do it and not get paid for it. Like, <laughs> um, I kind of can't pay my mortgage if, unless I get paid for it. So there's that, but I would totally like give my, my time to, to what I consider making the world a better place, right? And uh, and so I, I know in early two thousands I, I I I put a PR into it in, on this weird edge of edge case on a uh, 
uh, on a communication, like a checksum communication thing that, uh, um, and didn't get the greatest response because they did not like the way I wrote it. But um, but it was like it was like I I I'm just trying to contribute. Most recently, my um, I have a piece of software that's going I'm gonna use on our on our videos here. Um, that will turn that I wrote and it's a, it's up on GitHub and it's um, it it turns around the videos and gets them up on WPTV really quickly. So that is um, that's like sort of WordPress has been my sort of like I'm going to contribute contribute to the community, do the thing that I love, and hopefully make everybody happy. <laughs> so mine is probably less selfless or yeah less selfless. Um, like I said, I gave a talk in 2012, and at the time, I just started teaching at Sheridan College. And so for me, I was trying to build my resume. Um, I was trying to build my accreditation, put myself out there as an expert. Right? If, I, if I'm supposed to be teaching this stuff, if I'm supposed to be whatever, I need to put this on my resume. And one of those ways is speaking. So I went to this, um, I actually got a speaking part in the WordCamp because somebody else decided they weren't going to sign the media release. So they got canceled. So there was an open spot. And I, I did a case study. But the other part of me is naturally a teacher. Right? I, I love to impart knowledge. I love to help people out in learning how WordPress works or whatever the thing is. So yes, I did it with the intent of sort of building my own resume. But then I realized, and someone put it to me, it's like, well, you're actually contributing. What? You mean by, by getting up here and talking? Like, people are actually going to listen to me and, and that's contributing? And I'm like, yeah, that, that actually contributes to the library. I'm like, oh. So I was actually contributing before I really even knew what it was. The other way that I, I would say that I contribute, um, I'm actually also on the training team, I forgot to mention. Um, I, I do it a little bit less formally than, say, people like Courtney, but she usually puts me on some kind of uh, um, sort of specialized Thing on contributor day, it's like I need you to just sit there and you sit there and I just pick your brain. Okay, Courtney, sure. So, so three times we mentioned Courtney's name. Does she appear? <laughs> just checking. Still yeah, and, and so the, and the last way that, that I like to say that I contribute is, is that I drag other people into this. <laughs> um, and and Jones is over there somewhere. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, he's over there. Um, yeah, I drag these people down from Canada and, you know, just get them to do talks and get them to do things for the community. Yeah, and mine was, after I attended WordCamp Buffalo that year, and then I was bit by the bug, I attended WordCamp Toronto, where I like to teach Shanta that she snubbed me. Oh, <laughs> oh. She was an organizer, she was busy, and I was just, like, awestruck by all the people there. Uh, and after that, I thought, I want to be involved. And so I applied to speak at WordCamp Buffalo the next year. And I was, it was the last time in my life, I kid you not, it was the very last time in my life that I ever had imposter syndrome. Because here I was walking onto the stage, and it was a literal stage like this one, talking about the hidden elements of WordPress that aren't really hidden, but so many of us don't know about. And I was like, I've been using WordPress for a couple of years. I'm going to get on this stage. And I'm going to talk to people about what I think are the hidden things that I've discovered that they might not know about. And they're all going to yell up and yell, imposter, you don't know what you're talking about. That's not the way it is. It doesn't work that way. And instead what happened was I got off that stage and 12 people followed me out to the happiness bar to ask me more questions and learn more from me. And I thought, you don't have to have been here since day one to contribute. You don't have to have been here since day one to know things to help other people. And so I was like, well, I'm going to want to speak more then because I kind of like this. <laughs> and I started to apply to speak more places. And then the next year, I suggested that we combine WordCamp Rochester or Rochester into Buffalo before we even had a WordCamp Rochester. And Buffalo's like, no, no thanks. So I was like, well, now what? <laughs> so instead, we started WordCamp Rochester started organizing, and I helped organize WordCamp Buffalo, I helped organize WordCamp Rochester, and then I started organizing WordCamp US, and then I started speaking more, and then I got a full-time job in WordPress. Before I knew it, I had an entire life because of having stepped on that stage the first time. 
and being able to know that the things that I can do, even if I'm not a developer, can help contribute to other people's success, man, I was in. I was all in. And that's what it was for me. And that, like, it wasn't coding, it wasn't bugs, because I can tell you if it didn't work, but I don't know why, right? That's not my thing. But to be able to share, to teach, to bring other people, to lift other voices, that's what I like about it. And that's where I have spent most of my time in WordPress. So that's why I came up. And, and just for the record, in true Canadian fashion, I have been apologizing to her ever since. <laughs> in a true American fashion, <laughs> I'm part Canadian in my heritage, so I accept it, right away. <laughs> yeah, honorary Canadian. I could keep asking questions of the panel, but I do want to give you an opportunity. I mean, I will go on until the very bitter end. Unless you all have questions, I would rather that you ask questions of any one of us from anything you've heard about how we contribute so that we can answer your questions about how to get involved, too. So if you have a question. And can I just say something? Marianne, yes. I just wanted to say, like, this is the first in-person work camp I've been to since 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the last work camp Rochester. We did 2020 online, but this is the first time we've done it in person. And I just wanted to say how it was wonderful today. It was so great. And this was really, it was such a great day to reconnect with people. Thank you. And we had so many wonderful people contributing, and that's what made it so yes. amazingly awesome. Great yes. contributions today. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sarah, how'd you head up? Uh, how do you balance your work life and family life with volunteering for the community? I don't have a life, so I'm going to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you with families. Um. I don't know, with a difficulty. <laughs> Uh, I, it's just me and my husband. I don't have too many people, and he worked as a workaholic as well. But no, um, I actually have. Uh, I do a lot of work. I do. I have days and times where I refuse to do any work. I don't care if it's an emergency. I'm not doing the work because I don't want to burn out and I don't want to be stressed out. Um, and that for me is the weekends, and that's uh, also my nights. Um, so I advise people. Have like some no, some heck no times <laughs> that you schedule where you're just not going to work. That usually helps me. Yeah, I'd say similar. Um, I wouldn't say that the balance is really what I have, um, but it's really more of a priority. Like, my family comes first, and I'll know when I've been neglecting them long enough that I need to put everything else aside and be able to focus that time on them. And so, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I would necessarily say that it's a balance, but it's really just like prioritizing and making sure that like I'm getting stuff done, but that I'm getting things done in the right order as of importance to me. Yeah, I, so I have two small kids, and so it's always, um, you know, like 4 o'clock to like 6.30 is uh, the time that I always try to disconnect. Um, and I, I've been trying to be more conscious about putting my phone away and not having it around the distraction of, you know, because you have your phone in your pocket. We, we all do it. We all look. We all, oh, you see what's going on. You think of something. Oh, it's a Slack notification. Yeah, you, you pull it out to think, look up something or make a note of something, and then before you know it, you've been on it for 10 minutes, right? You know, um, when your watch is buzzing all day long. Yeah, yeah that too. I, I keep all my devices on silent, <laughs> and I use focus modes to really limit the, you know, the stimuli. Um, but at the same time, I recognize that um, as a more senior contributor and a leader in the community, I, I do get called on at some points to do uh, some really time intensive work. Uh, and so, for example, when a release is going out, um, I'm one of the people that's able to actually package that release and get it ready to, to, to go out. Um, and there's not many people that have the time and uh, that ability to do that. And so it's uh, it, it comes in ebbs and flows, and like you said, is, is knowing when to take a break. And so there might be days where you know I go, I get the kids to bed, and then uh, I come back. And recently there was um, a good example of this is uh, there was a security release on a Tuesday, and there was some unforeseen ways that people were using blocks in the wild. And so people that were, well, short codes within blocks. Um, and so there was an issue with the security fix where 
certain ways that short codes are being used, they stop working. And so we got to Thursday, and usually we don't do any releases on Thursday or later because you start to get into people's weekends and, and the, the, the updates go out if there's more problems, like what, what, what do you do? People are giving up their weekends and their time off. Um, and it got to Friday, and it was very apparent that we had to fix it because the short codes in Woo weren't working. So people that had stores, their carts weren't showing up, and um, it, was just, it was just more impactful than we had thought at first. Um, and so it ended up, you know, it was a Friday night, and it was me and a half a dozen other people, and uh, it was much later for some of the European folks that were helping out, but I think that we finally pushed that release out at 2 a.m. on Saturday morning. And so there are times where, as a, as a sponsored person, I'm called upon to, to give that extra time because it's, it's important, it's impactful, it's, it's necessary. And so um, I always try to, my work is very supportive about, oh, well, you work late or you worked at a work camp all weekend, take a day, take a couple of days here and there when you need to and just communicate with, that, with us so that, um, but yeah, it's definitely, have those times that you need to, you are very concrete about, but also be open to flexibility and, and work with whoever you're sponsored by or whoever you work with to, 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 to take the time off. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. If you have like a 2 a.m. release for core, and you know, whoever else you work is in core, or have, do you have a QA process? And I know this is not exactly in this discussion, but do you, would you have like a QA process? with open source like we would for agencies. Sure, that, um, I won't get too deep into it because I don't want anybody yeah. else to have a thought with that, but with any security release, there's a security team and no security fixes go in unless like several people right. thoroughly review it. Um, but this one was very, very important because we had to make sure we fixed the additional bug without reintroducing the original bug that was in, in the release. Um, and so we had to be actually careful with that one. But when the release is going out, there's uh, they're called release parties, and so in the core Slack, there'll be people that uh, you know, people like me will build the package and say, "Here it is. Let's test it. Um, make sure it doesn't break. There's no fatal errors." So, so people will try to exploit yep. that security. Be like, you can't do it. Yep. Well, and well, in some cases, most people, most of the time, they don't know what the issue is yet because it hasn't been released. But it's more of just general testing to make sure the package works and nothing breaks when you can install a site, you can update the site and different versions of PHP. Um, and then once we're comfortable with the level of testing, we'll, we'll finally push that level. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if anybody has anything. No, I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to go back to the original question. Um, as far as balance goes, um, in my 9 to 5 job, obviously I deal with WordPress itself, not as much. Um, some of our, our actual staff members are members of the community team. Um, I'm on the training team, I'm on the diversity team as well, like I also forgot to mention. And, and that's the thing, the list goes on and on and on. Um, and, and we contribute in different ways and in different volumes. Again, for me, a lot of this is very selfless. I enjoy this. Almost every vacation day that I have taken has been off the back of a work camp. And let me be clear, my job does not require me to go to work camps like, like some of you guys here, right? Like you have to put up tables and do whatever. Some of our staff are going there to do work. I didn't. I took vacation. I still wore my codable stuff and yeah, I still, yeah, I work for codable. Yeah, you want to go talk to that guy over there or that person. I did it on my own vacation because I love doing this. So to me, I took vacation time, even though I wasn't necessarily speaking at these events, but I volunteered at them or, or whatever, and I got to travel. So like I said, it, it, a lot of it comes back to being, it's, it's not entirely a selfless act. Like, I just enjoy it. Yeah. And I would just point out that balance looks different for everybody. So I don't have kids at home anymore. My daughter's 31, she lives in another city. I have two cats at home who could care less as long as there's food in the dish. <laughs> and so what I do to feed myself is I go out with my cameras. I take two digital cameras with me. I drive out to a place called Montezuma's Wildlife Refuge. I spend an hour driving a mile and I take pictures of eagles and egrets and flowers and birds and insects. And I get home and I'm so excited to see what's on that SD card. And how can I make these pictures a little enhanced? And how can I make sure that 
Okay, I'm going to be honest and tell you my horizons are always crooked, but you will never see me close enough <laughs> to the crooked horizon because I edit those very well, close enough to crooked anyway. How did that, that, how'd that crazy lit, long lens that you had work out for you? Oh, the, I have several more now, so we'll talk about it. I have, I spent way too much money on cameras, <laughs> and I don't have grandkids either, so it's all good. <laughs> but, so balance looks different for different people, and what I just my uh, I always say find something that feeds your soul. I also have five podcasts that I work on, mm -hmm. and I will spend an evening or a Saturday interviewing somebody over Zoom at another part of the world, and I'm excited about that. And getting that edited and transcripted and posted to the internet makes me ridiculously happy. And if that if if what looks adjacent to work to you is also what makes you super happy. That is balance, and it's okay. So I know somebody else over here had another question. Yes? Uh, how do you come up with the subject for your talks? Like, oh, that's a great question. So how do you guys come up with the subject for your talks? Kira. Kira, you go first. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure this one is like, you should totally do a talk on that. Yeah. <laughs> Shanta tells you. It's, so I think that's pretty much. Suggest. 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 To do a talk about something. <laughs> I've given a grand total of one talk. And, and the way I decided on that one is I just picked the thing that I felt like I knew the most about. It was about WooCommerce. A lot of my job, like I said, I worked for a company called Skyverge that was all WooCommerce plugin support. And so I picked something that I felt like I knew enough about to teach somebody something. I didn't need to teach everybody everything. I just felt like I needed to find a way to teach somebody something. For me, it's, um, it, as a sponsored person in the community, part of being privileged <coughs> with that, with that, uh, you know, that, that blessing is to uh, serve as a community servant and a steward. So sometimes, uh, what I usually do to the major camps is I'll submit one talk that I might be lesser excited about, but it's I know it's an important topic. Um, I know that it's something that a lot of people will benefit from. Uh, and, and you know, I'll, I might work on some things that are really uh, deep, and then some things that are more shallow. And those more shallow things more often will have a greater reach and a, and a much larger effect. Um, even the talk here, like it was about the plugin API and, and hook API. And that's something I'm, I'm like, I've been using since I started using WordPress, and you know, it's pretty, I'm pretty desensitized to it, but it's, it's such a foundational part of WordPress that um, new, anybody that's newer to WordPress should understand that and know how it works. Um, and so it's really important to get topics like that out there. And then the other talk I'll, I'll usually reserve for something I'm more passionate about, I've been working on. Um, I, was, I was fortunate enough to speak at work in Asia about um, I, I was one of the main people that migrated all of WordPress organizations testing to GitHub Actions from Travis CI. Uh, Travis changed their licensing and so we had to, we had to move over. And so just digging in and, and doing that work and talking about what I learned and what, what the challenges at scale of a, a project that, of our size um, encounters when doing that is, is interesting, right? But less people may, may choose that talk. Uh, but it's something I have a great value of presenting because I, I was so deep in the weeds and uh, in the getting that work done. A couple of the things that I sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, and, yeah, sorry. thank you. Sorry, sorry. Um, there are a couple of ways that I come up with the talks. One is um, I was teaching at the same time, and so some of the things that I was teaching in classes I thought would translate well into a talk. Um, and, you know, if I'd given that, you know, like WordPress 101 was one of the most typical ones I did. And I would go to a bunch of different places and do that same talk. So sometimes it would get stale and then I would find something else or I'd go back the next year and do, okay, remember I did WordPress 101 last year? We're going to do 102 this year and, and sort of do that. The other part is um, when I started teaching a, um, a slightly more advanced program at a different college, I had to come up with a curriculum. 
And so at Sheridan, we were teaching them not necessarily to be developers, but we were teaching them to respect the developers and to understand at least their, their thinking and, and whatnot. Whereas at Mohawk, we were teaching them to be web developers. So I was teaching these people, like they're gonna have to learn about, you know, uh, at the time, you know, custom post types and ACFs and, wait a minute, I don't know how that stuff works. Oh crap, I guess I better learn. Okay, so I actually went and I learned how they worked. And, and I'm like, wait a minute, like, this can be really confusing. And I, I actually had a conversation with um, some, some other really amazing WordPress talk people, uh, Michelle Schultz and Dan Beal, God rest him. Um, and, and I said, I, I need to understand how these things work, like just conceptually. And they put it really clear in my head. Um, I did a LinkedIn course from Morton Rand Hendrickson. Hey, I love the Canadian. Um, and, um, and I learned how they worked. But then I realized if I tried to teach that to my students at Sheridan, they wouldn't know what the heck I was talking about. And I noticed in the WordPress community that there was a lot of confusion. So I just did a talk on, and I think it was called uh, WTH, are CPTs and ACFs. And, and was just explaining in sort of basic English how I did it, along with some, some of the level of application. So some of it is about what I already know and what I think people need to know. Some of it is what I had to learn and what I learned from that. And the other part of that could very well be, depending on what you work in, what questions are you getting asked a lot, right? You usually write a blog article on it. Well, maybe this should be a little bit bigger than just a blog article. Maybe that should be a talk. Michelle is making me do this. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're, you're, you're like, here, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the blog. Um, <laughs> No, um, so I have a lot of different interests, and my mind goes a mile a minute, and my mouth does too. And uh, when coming up for my talk, um, I know a lot of people might know of me or might have seen a Twitter rant from me, but they don't know exactly what I do and how and why I do it. Um, in my, again, my mind works kind of crazy. I can tie a lot of things together and they make sense, which I hope my talk this morning makes sense because I could talk to you all about my grandmother and my family, but also my ideas of how to get more people contributing. So that's why I chose my talk, because I can tie so many things into it, but also this was my first talk, and I wanted everybody to know who I am and why I do what I do. And I just think that what's interesting to me might be interesting to other people, and then I also look for gaps. So what are some things that aren't being talked about? And I do a lot of talking about um, DEIB, so diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. I do talks about like, hey, maybe somebody else wants to learn how to do a podcast, so I'll teach her how to do a podcast, or hey, I learned these new things, how can I share that? And so, and I also do mental health talks, because I have dealt with mental health issues my whole life, and I want other people to know it's okay, and normalizing mental health and conversations around mental health is important. So for me, that's it. I want to interrupt questions, and I want to turn to Jonathan for a second. I don't know that everybody knows what it means to be sponsored. Sure. So could you talk about that? Yeah, so uh, I, don't know, I don't remember which year, but um, at a point in time, Matt Mollowag, the co-founder of WordPress, he put out a challenge to anyone that makes money off WordPress or uh, enjoys WordPress or uses WordPress at all to contribute 5% of their time or their resources back to the WordPress project. And that could be writing plugins, it could be you know, fixing bugs, it could be translating to different languages. Um, and the goal there is to prevent the tragedy of the commons where everybody takes and takes and takes and nobody's replenishing uh, for other people that come after them. And so um, many companies, there's, there's a Five for the Future program now, if you go to wordpress.org slash the number five, FTF, um, you can see more about that. But Essentially, it's a way for people involved in the space to give back time through people hours or uh, mon monetary for sponsoring work camps um, to help continue to foster a, a growing project. And um, you know, as 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 the project grows and scales, we need more and more of those people to kind of step up and give that 
give that time and that contribution to, to help make sure that WordPress is here for uh, my kids, my young kids, and whoever else, my their young kids, maybe. So we have five minutes left, so what I want to do is start with Marcus, go down and say, what's your favorite thing about contributing to WordPress? Favorite thing? So, I'm going to say it's the I contribute to the WordPress photo directory team, and my favorite thing is seeing what other people share, like their photography, from all over the world. I just love hopping in there. I'm part of the moderation process, um, and a lot of it is just really, really good. And so I love seeing just everyone's contributions in, in photos from all over the world. Oh, that's a hard one. I like, I just like solving problems and stuff. So it's like when I see, I see, see like there's a need for some, you know, I can, if I can speak and I can, you know, fill that need or if I can build a piece of software to fill that need, that's, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> if you give me a chance to talk, I'm going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it's not wrong. Um, but but um, you know, to, to what to what you were saying earlier, Marianne, like um, today's talk that I gave was the first live WordCamp talk that I've given since Rochester in 2019. And being at a WordCamp for me, it, it fills my soul. Okay, um, being the Type A personality that I am, I just love being around people, and so. You know, needless to say, the last few years have been a little difficult for me. I'm back, not exactly back up to par with, you know, people time and, and everything else. Well, I mean, you know as much as I, like, how much I like being around people. Like, I, I don't like being alone. So, for me, it's about the travel I get to do. It's basically an excuse for me to travel, you know, to come down and, you know, do some shopping in Buffalo or whatever. But, um, but, but to do that traveling bit, it's an excuse for me. I, even when I was doing it before, uh, before I was working for the current company I am, I would still take half a day off and go to a work camp, or, you know, and, and it's seeing those people, right? Um, a, a couple of years ago, I got diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and I literally got the diagnosis two days before I was set to organize, or to, to do the, the day of the camp, right? And I literally went around to a couple of people there, and I said, yeah, like, I got this, and they were honestly concerned. This is my friend circle, or one of them. That, to me, is the best thing ever. For me, it's uh, seeing the doors that WordPress opens. So, um, you know, I've been fortunate. I, I mentioned WordCamp Asia. I've been to. I I've never been to Europe. I've been to Europe three times now from doing this job, um, and just seeing. Being able to be a part of that, and you you never know as a contributor what's going to resonate with someone else. Um, my first WordCamp talk I was talking about was just about plugin development, and I saw someone four or five years later, and they said, "Oh, I got this thing now, this business. I'm helping clients," and, and it was all it was all thanks to your workshop that you did, and just the way that you explained it. There's something that I was so confused about. It just it just clicked for me, and and since then like, I've been I've been running with WordPress, um, and so you never know what doors and, and what it's going to enable someone to be able to do in their life, build a livelihood, travel, uh, meet people in different parts of the globe. I probably would have never had friends in Australia or Europe or Asia, and I have in all of those places I have I have very good friends now, um, and it's just. That's that's inspiring to me, and it, you know I like contributing, but that makes it even more. And I leave these word camps, uh, and I, I just I can't wait to get home. And I know I said I take a day off when I do extra things, but I sometimes just want to skip that day and just get back to work and, and, and collaborating with everybody. And um, that's that's definitely my favorite part. I'm a learner, and I am a lifelong learner. I want to learn the rest of my life. And when you're contributing, even if you don't fix the issue or solve the problem, you're learning. And that is my favorite thing. Um, I've learned more contributing than research in the WordPress community. Uh, I away. But yes, um, when you contribute, you learn a lot. You either learn about the solution, or you learn about the person, or you just learn about something you might want to learn even more about and get better at. So um, 
every time I go in and I get to contribute, I get to learn something, and it makes me a happier and more enlightened person. And also, again, uh, since this is the end of the conference, charity begins at home. I opened it with that. I love helping people. WordPress definitely changed a lot of things for me, and I want a lot of people from my community and for me, it's absolutely the people. Um, but also knowing it's not just that there's so many amazing people and I've made so many amazing friends that I get to see them all the time. It's knowing that I make a difference. And that the things that I do in WordPress makes a difference. Whether it's I made a really cool tweet and it got used by WordPress.org, like that makes a difference to me, right? Or knowing that I've raised money and helped people get to work camps. That makes a difference. There's so many different ways that every single one of us can make a difference whether it's small or large, and it all works to the good of the whole community. And these people here with me today on the stage are part of what makes a difference. And every single one of you, because you came today, are part of what makes a difference and makes this community great and keeps it moving forward. So I think we're at time. We are one minute over time. So I want to say thank you to all of you. Um, you know, don't forget, you have friends that bring you butter charts and coffee. Well, yeah, there's all the Canadian treats that I was going to